Hello and welcome to FIA Connect and another of our virtual panel discussion sessions. My name is Brian Burridge. I'm the Chief Exec of the Royal Aeronautical Society. Over the next 30 minutes, we're taking a look at Team Tempest and their recent expansion of strategic partners and how this is benefiting the UK now and in the future. To give you an insight into this, the world of Team Tempest, we are joined by Dave Holmes, Manufacturing Director of BAE Systems, Cecil Buchanan, Chief Scientist from the Royal Air Force Rapid Capability Office, Mark Miller from UK and Aerospace, and Matt Ray, a Team Tempest young engineer from Rolls-Royce. Hello, and um, you're all very welcome. We look forward to what you have to say. The format to today's session will be as follows. We'll hear a short introduction from each of our panelists, including a short overview of the recent expansion announcement from Dave Holmes. Then I'll move the conversation forward between the panelists by asking some questions around Team Tempest and generating some discussion. So, without further ado, let's get underway with an introduction from our panelists, followed by the short introduction about the recent Tempest collaboration announcement from Dave Holmes. So, first, over to you, Mark Miller from GKN Aerospace. Thank you, Sir Brian, um, and thank you very much uh, for inviting me today. Uh, so, uh, as my title suggests, I'm the Business Development Director for UK Defence for GKN Aerospace. And uh, a key element of my role is to develop and deliver the company strategy for our involvement in UK future programmes. Um, I'm also, therefore, the director for all activity that GK and Aerospace uh, will participate in within Team Tempest. Uh, and so, obviously, I'm very pleased that we've been invited to join the programme and, as I said, delighted to join this panel. Thanks very much, Mark. And it's really good to see GK and Aerospace now part of a Team Tempest. So uh, let's now hear from Cecil Buchanan, the head scientist from the Royal Air Force Rapid Capability Office. Cecil, over to you. Uh, thank you, Sir Brian. Uh, yeah, my name is Cecil Buchanan. I'm chief scientist in the Air Force RCO. Uh, we have been responsible for delivering uh, the Future Combat Air System Technology Initiative, of which Team Tempest is an element, uh, on behalf of the MOD for the last uh, four years. Uh, so we sponsor all of the activities on behalf of the government and we are very pleased uh, with how we have managed to partner strategically uh, with not just the four primes to date but with the uh, seven additional companies uh, that are being announced today. Okay, thank you. And it's a uh, really great development for the Royal Air Force to have a rapid capability office of its own. And now over to um, a Rolls-Royce team Tempest engineer, Matt Ray. Hi. Uh, my name is Matt Ray. I'm an engineer at Rolls-Royce. Uh, having recently completed the graduate scheme, I'm currently working as a project systems engineer on the Tempest program with a focus on developing new engineering capabilities and novel technologies for a future combat product. Thanks, Matt. And the, um, the weight of responsibilities on your shoulders to encourage as many young people as possible to enter the um, aerospace sector and also be interested in Team Tempest. And uh, the guy with most to say about um, latest developments, Dave Holmes from BA Systems, uh, if you just give us your introduction and then um, some interesting news. Thank you, Sir Brian, and uh, thank you, panelists, for joining us today. Uh, so I'm Dave Holmes. I'm the Manufacturing Director for the Air Sector BA Systems. I've had the privilege of being involved with Team Tempest since its announcement two years ago at Farnborough, and I've got the responsibility for developing the next generation manufacturing technologies, as well as bringing forward uh, the next generation of young engineers and manufacturers who uh, hopefully will prosper for many decades of what we're about to achieve together. Thanks. and. Um are you able to tell us anything about the new collective agreements? Sure, and thank you. I mean, obviously, we're delighted uh, today that we can announce that we've signed uh, a first series of, of new collaborative uh, agreements with seven organisations within the UK. Uh, great that Mark's with us today from GKN, clearly that's one of the, uh, the companies, but also GE UK, Collins Aerospace, Tallis UK, Bombardier Belfast, Martin Baker and Kinetic. 
And all those organisations joined the enterprise, uh, and I'm sure they agree, bring with them a wealth of capability. Th these arrangements for us now as Team Tempest start to create a new kind of partnerships. We know we need to transform our relationships as the team yeah, and bring forward new suppliers and really bring the best capability and capacity and innovation that the UK can bring to bear on this uh, exciting endeavour. And what you'll notice is that we're trying to bring together capability capacity, not just from within the defence sector, but also reaching outside and more of that later, hopefully, as we carry on our discussions. The UK combat air sector is a tremendous contribution in terms of skills, and it's great that we've got some, uh, some young representation today, uh, but also around the development of advanced technologies and productivity uh, for our highly skilled workforce across the breadth of the UK. And it's important that we remember that the, one of the key endeavours from Team Tempest is that with our vision, we set out to uh, ensure that the UK remains a world leader in this sector. Uh, and I think from, from everything that we're going to see for bringing these new partners on board, that'll help contribute to a stronger, and prosperous uh, and influential UK um, as we go forward. So to achieve this endeavours, it's clear now that we must uh, develop uh, and advance our technology, our intellectual property is a UK footprint, and demonstrate how we can grow this to secure further investment in the programme and take that forward and build the UK skill base so it's there for many decades to come to take the benefit. So finally, you know, we understand the benefit of effective partnerships as all the team members together. Uh, and now what we're bringing on board is some of the best innovators that the UK has got to offer. And hopefully we'll exercise that through the supply chain. Uh, thanks, Dave. Well, I'm going to stay with you because um, just peeling back the layers from all of that, what is it about Team Tempest that makes it unique, uh, both as a programme and as an approach? And what is its significance as a national endeavour, considering the recent history of uh, military aerospace in the UK? Yeah, excellent question, Sir Brian. So I think it's first and foremost we set the context uh, that at the end of this year, Team Tempest will define an outline business case uh, that will submit to the government to hopefully secure investment to move forward on the assessment phase uh, and from that evidenced it with all of the contributions that we're now bringing to bear. And from that, we'll, we'll see a fundamental decision taking that programme forward uh, so that we can demonstrate the strength of the UK uh, and what it's got to offer in terms of providing next generation capability, not just for the UK uh, customer, but also for the international offering as well. To achieve this, I think, you know, we're all clear that we need a game changer. So we need to generate a game changer in technology. We need to generate game changing IP, uh, the intellectual property that will underpin this offer. And of course, we need to, to train the next generation of engineers and technologists who will take advantage of this program for many decades to come. To do that, then we understand that we need to have new approaches. We need to have new ways of working, new ways of actually bringing these technologies forward new partnerships and collaborations, so that we drive a step change in terms of pace, in terms of the overall approach to qualification and actually bringing forward solutions that will give uh, military advantage to our end users. And more importantly, we break the cycle, the infamous Augustine curve, and that we use our collective knowledge, now capabilities, uh, through the complete partnership to show we can do that. So today, by bringing on board and announcing these new partners, I think we can see that they bring a rich capability set, proven knowledge, not just in the defence sector, but wider, that underpins this ambition. Uh, it's important that we bring forward solid evidence uh, to make sure people understand that what we, what we are offering is credible. And I think what this will do now for us is actually, you know, contribute to the growth and investment in this true UK skill base uh, so that we can take this a, a lot wider and start to transition from what's been really effective so far into an absolute national endeavour uh, and something that we can all be proud of. So from the very onset, you know, Team Tempest uh, has brought together uh, some of the capability in the UK. Uh, but now what we're seeing is that expansion from what we saw initially of UK best defence industry, working with the MOD and the RAF uh, and, and starting to take that to that next level with these skills and capabilities offered, offered from others uh, as we partner. And finally, I think uh, when you see the range of companies that we bring, you know, we've already got uh, over 60 technology demonstration programs in train. Uh, well, I think that these companies that we're bringing on board as part of this partnership will start to uh, support those endeavours 
uh, prove capability and use those those elements uh, to underpin the, the whole proposition that we've got. And remembering that you know this is around us demonstrating that we can do something broadly in half the time, and ergo of that that we start to see some significant cost reductions, which would be crucial in terms of gaining confidence to take this program forward. Yeah, thanks for that. Very interesting. The Augustine curve, of course, is um, um, in in a sense it posits that the cost of a combat aeroplane will accelerate to the extent that nations will only be able to um, afford one <laughs> yes. at some stage in the future. And 60 tech programs harmonising those, keeping the program management uh, properly aligned is a bit of a challenge. So uh, always good to have a fresh pair of eyes inside a program like this. So I'm going to turn to Mark. It's great news that GKN Aerospace is now part of this project. But what was the driver for you to want to be involved and what are you expecting to get out of it? Uh, great question. And, and, you know, at GKN Aerospace, we're committed to developing technology uh, for future aerospace applications. And so this absolutely fits within that, that ambition uh, and st strategic intent for us. Um, of course, this revolves around our people and our materials and processes and the manufacturing capability that, uh, that we have to create technological solutions to meet the challenges of tomorrow. And, you know, this is a, an area that, that we have a lot of expertise in in our civil business. And we're really trying to focus this now into a, into a defence, into the defence arena. Team Tempest and, and, uh, and the whole um, uh, Future Combat Air System initiative, actually, it was a, was a great uh, um, opportunity for us to really demonstrate what we can do. But also, and more specifically, how we can now join that collaborative effort. Um, because it's all about collaboration, and, and that's really key to this. You know, there's, there's the the ways, the old ways of doing business are pretty much uh, um, uh, out the door now. We have to work together to understand what's best in British, what's best internationally, how we can coordinate and cooperate and move forward. You know, as I said earlier, we're very proud to become part of Team Tempest, um, and how we can use established technologies, but also develop um, emerging technology projects together. Um, and to see new partners, you know, it, it is really fantastic. So we'll be using expertise from our business to support progression on the projects, um, complement the skills that we're already working on them. Um, the collaboration uh, effort will bring to life different experiences uh, from our industries uh, and foster innovation that will deliver game-changing capability, which we're really excited about. So, you know, all in all, by having combined efforts with partners, that truly collaborative approach, we can generate capabilities that require us now in this future space to be agile and rapid and affordable. Um, and, and so that we can support the future of combat air. And this for us, GKN, is a very, very exciting opportunity. Thank you. Um, yeah, agile, rapid and affordable um, is... Uh an interesting challenge for the aerospace industry, but I'm gonna to come to Cecil now because some of the companies joining this project are from outside the world of defense and military systems. So Cecil, what do you see as the value in working with other broader industry, um, potentially even academia in this instance? And are the benefits of collaboration across that number of different industries um, I'd be interested in examples, uh, both um, good examples and areas where harmonising that number of collaborative partners can be a problem. So um, we'd be very interested in that. Uh, thank you, Sir Brian. Uh, always the easy questions, I see. <laughs> so uh, from the uh, from the outset of Team Tempest, uh, UK generated intellectual property, people, skills, facilities, these are all seen uh, by the MOD as critical to sustaining the UK combat air operational advantage and freedom of action. So that is what we enjoy today uh, in Typhoon, that's what we enjoyed previously in Tornado and, uh, and previous uh, combat aircraft. Um, Team Tempest is that once in a generation opportunity to fundamentally transform the, the UK's combat air enterprise. Uh, we should look at it as a massive privilege to be engaged in it, and I certainly do that, as do my colleagues. Uh, both within the MOD and within the industry. Uh, we are looking to strengthen our position as a global leader. Um, it's not only what we want to achieve in advanced technology, but how we go about uh, achieving it uh, that we've been interested in from the outset. 
uh, we're looking to unleash a new wave of innovation uh, and thereby enhance our national security and revitalize our international ties in the combat air uh, arena. Uh, UK aerospace and other uh, high technology sectors such as automotive and nuclear have a vital part to play in us achieving this ambition. So we're not just looking for uh, uh, defence aerospace uh, input into this programme. To date, Team Tempest have engaged about 600 uh, small, medium and large companies, as well as uh, academia across the UK. And we have placed some uh, 200 contracts uh, with, uh, with uh, these people across this ecosystem. Uh, it's only the start of the journey. We will continue to strive to harness the very best of breed from across the UK enterprise. Uh, some of what we're discussing today, and so we've got GKM with us. Uh, and we're broadening our approach to form long-term strategic partnerships uh, for the prosperity of the nation. As you know, Sir Brian, uh, advanced technology doesn't happen overnight. It takes quite a long time to go co-invest between government and industry to, uh, to, set, in term, uh, to set in place long-term planning uh, for industry to, to go recruit and, uh, and get new people in the door and, and, and that fresh blood that we need into the, uh, the organisations. So we have a lot more to do to unlock uh, the world-class talent that we and diversity we have within the nation, from the small through the larger organisations and across multiple sectors, including all world-class academic institutes. Uh, we, are, we are working really closely with other government departments to make sure that we are maximising the opportunities for cross-department coordination. So in particular, we are working hand-in-glove with the uh, High Technology Catapult Initiatives, uh, funded through BAYS, the Aerospace Technology Institute, and the Innovate UK Fund Initiatives. And you should see more of that, uh, perhaps not this week, but uh, certainly in the near future. Uh, we are already bringing in cyber related technologies from the financial sector uh, and advanced materials and manufacturing from other sectors to bear within the, the Team Tempest program uh, right now. Uh, never mind what might be planned for the acquisition program that Dave was alluding to uh, in, his, uh, in his talk at the start. Uh, this close working across the UK ecosystem will only increase, and you will see it increasing uh, over the coming months and years. Uh, so what do we get out of it? We, we are looking to harness uh, the very best ideas from across the UK. We are very conscious that there has been significant innovation uh, well outside of defence aerospace. That can that we can bring to bear to address some of the problems that, that we have to tackle if we're going to deliver a world class product uh, in the acquisition program. Uh, thanks. Um, I'm, I'm going to go to Matt uh, momentarily, but first, Dave, can I just ask you briefly um, because um, it begs a question: What other companies internationally, or perhaps in the UK? Uh, may be looking to achieve partner status. And what do, what do you reckon the announcement about GK and aerospace means for them? Yeah, thank you, Sir Brian. I think it's important to remember, you know, building on Mark and Cecil's point, you know, we're seeking out what I would describe as best of breed. Uh, we talked about Augustine's curve. The challenges we face on time to market, agility, flexibility, uh, cost competitiveness uh, touches every sector. Um, and Therefore, you know, the, the door's open for people to come forward because we really do want the best of breed. We really want to see people who can force a step change, a paradigm shift from where we've been traditionally with some great products. Um, and I think we also demonstrate with the, the, the founding members of Team Tempest, this great addition of these seven partners today, that we now see people who are great at collaborating, great at sponsoring, seeking out great ideas and allowing these things to surface and come forward. So whether those people be within the SME base, whether it be in academia, whether they actually be even international, you know, people who will bring advantage around our, our joint, you know, vision of this program, you know, they will be welcome um, to actually bring forward up those contributions and ideas. And it's really important that we, you know, we we maintain that transparency and allow those people to earn their way into this program. Okay, thank you. So um, across the map now, um, so young engineer from Rolls Royce. Um, hopefully a great role model for all the young people who are watching. Um, can you tell us something about the work that you've been doing as part of, of the Tempest project and, uh, and give us a sense of what it means for you? Thank you. Uh, so my role on the Tempest programme is to help scope out and plan the development of those new technologies as we've just been talking about, you know, step change in, in capability. 
And it's, it's those new technologies that are aiming to make the future combat product truly world leading. I work with our specialists and in, that's in many different domains and, and with our test engineers as well to understand what it is we have to prove and how we're going to go about proving that over the next few years. Uh, so far, the project's been really interesting, uh, covering so many different technologies from you know, electrical generation, uh, new lightweight materials and, and innovative software and controls packages. Working at a really fast pace alongside such a diverse group of people, um, we generate a real wealth of ideas. Uh, and this means it's a really exciting project to be part of. Thank you. Um, I want to come back to Cecil because uh, something Dave said um, uh, touched a, um, a nerve, as it were. Um, uh, Cecil, can you just talk us through some of the technology innovations that are in development? and? Give us a sense of their importance for the program, specifically for Team Tempest, but maybe just touch on their broader application. Uh, yes, I can. Uh, so Tempest is a, a relatively high-paced, uh, lean-manned uh, outfit. Uh, David talked about uh, over 60 uh, individual projects across Team Tempest and indeed some of the broader uh, future Commodore system technology initiative. We have something over uh, about 100 individual advanced technology projects. Um, I think you will remember from the 2018 announcement that there was a uh, there's a collective investment of, of uh, something over two billion pounds uh, over the decade into Team Tempest and advanced technology. So we we have a we have a fairly active program right now in the UK. It is excellent to get new part partners involved. So let me give you a feel for uh, what we're trying to achieve. Every one of those projects will deliver a UK, European, or world first uh, in achievements. What are the things we're investing in? Uh, we are harnessing uh, the best of breed on design engineering methods. Some of these are coming in from other sectors that are offering between 10 and in some cases, a hundredfold uh, increase in speed uh, uh, at which engineers can design and assess the advanced vehicle concepts and components that we need them to go develop for a next generation uh, uh, combat aircraft. Uh, we are seeing these advances from across the, uh, the industrial partner base, so all of the, the uh, so-called core partners within Team Tempest. And we are achieving uh, technology maturation uh, at rates that are comparable to legacy programs with about a tenth of the manpower uh, that we would have, have historically employed. Uh, in terms of uh, digital, uh, so we're we're employing a broad spectrum of uh, model-based system engineering approaches, and that is going to become the backbone to the development of, of the acquisition program. Of course, we have the added uh, challenge of uh, co-generation and protection of uh, company intellectual property on a digital ecosystem, and ensuring that we are cyber resilient. So we are we are developing all of those uh, technologies, as well as the advanced tech that you might want to think about. In personnel, it's really good to see Matt here. So we've been actively recruiting as a, as a team, both within the government and industry, uh, graduates and uh, apprenticeships. Uh, we currently employ about 2,000 uh, engineers and scientists across the UK enterprise. And we are actively shifting the demographic from uh, folks who might have been in their 50s or 60s right down to we now have a, a spike of people in their 20s uh, straight out of university. Um, so as well as tech, we are investing in people. On some of the technology, sensors and mission systems, so uh, for, within Team Tempest, that's been driven to date by Leonardo. Uh, we are developing uh, very advanced broadband sensors with performance characteristics many times better than current products. In some instances, we, we have capabilities right now in the lab that are well over a thousand times uh, that of recent legacy uh, products. On open mission systems, uh, we have been investing in a comprehensive uh, open mission system uh, capability, and that will be the baseline architecture we will field into a next generation uh, uh, combat aircraft. Um, and we are doing that in collaboration with some of our uh, international allies. Uh, finally, on propulsion and power, since we have Matt on the line, um, we are harnessing uh, world class engineering that already exists across the, the Rolls Royce engineering portfolio. Uh, particularly pulling on civil engine technology and some of the electrical power systems that, uh, that they are already developing outside of the defense market. 
Um, we've already demonstrated the novel electrical power generation uh, and distribution in a surrogate engine within Team Tempest. And in other areas, we're pursuing uh, the application of, of additive layer manufacturing to fundamentally change the engine structures that we can utilize within a next generation engine. No, thank you for that. Um, in the interest of time, we're going into the quick fire round. So <clears throat> some short answers, but yes or no will not do. Um, Dave first, um, is normal gusting going to be proved right? Is Tempest going to be too costly to make a reality? No, I think we're going to demonstrate this time that we can break this curve. All the examples that, that Cecil's just gone through start to give confidence very early on. And I think the step change of us looking outside of the traditional knowledge set within the sector starts to uh, share those ideas and bring them forward. So no, I, I think I think this time, uh, best of breed, we're going to show that we can fracture this curve by some margin. Okay, you heard it here first. Uh, Matt, uh, <clears throat> a lot of your generation have been badly affected by COVID-19 and the impact on uh, graduate schemes, et cetera. But, um, um, are there many grads and apprentices working on this program with you? Yeah, so I feel really fortunate that I've been able to complete my scheme uh, and also that a project like Tempest is still providing opportunities for, for young people. And, and that's right across the different industries involved. Uh, I work a lot with young people, actually, and it's their drive and enthusiasm that's infectious. And I'm proud to have come through the graduate route alongside many other passionate colleagues. I think it's really important, actually, to continue to have younger people on projects like Tempest because, you know, they can have different approaches and ultimately so many different ideas. And um, Mark, from your point of view, um, we are inevitably under economic pressure um, and it's and certainly in a business like yours, which is probably already affected by the downturn in commercial, but defence yet to come, maybe. Um, what is it about a defence programme like this that gives you confidence um, in this period of uncertainty? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, absolutely you're right in what you said. And, and you know, unless you read, don't read the press, you, you know, it's no surprise that the, the aerospace industry has taken a massive downturn given the, the COVID-19 situation. I mean, that said, you know, we, we all recognise that the, the UK combat sector makes a huge contribution to UK prosperity. You know, they're not only through technology and R&D, but through skills, um, support to the supply chain and a, and a broad manufacturing footprint. So given the impact so far, you know, we see this as an opportunity to continue to support technology development projects that aren't uniquely aligned to defence, but in aerospace and perhaps in collaboration with automotive, as Dave said earlier on, you know, there are a large number of funded programs that we're either leading or a part of that we can now bring you know, to this and, and exploit that dual use technology or multiple use technology in, in some cases to really apply um, and, and be an accelerant to, to that, te that technology, which ordinarily in this kind of period of downturn might have taken a hit. So really, the reality is we need to invest and continue to invest our time, effort uh, and focus. Um, uh, to move forward so that we can pre reposition in the civil business later, but really apply that technology acceleration to Tempest now. Yeah, um, <clears throat> thanks, mate. Uh, I mean, a couple of points from a society standpoint, and I'd love to have uh, interrogated Dave about the use of advanced manufacturing and digital twinning and all those wonderful things that are part of this program. But that and the nature of what you're about is producing an era of great excitement in the sector which will undoubtedly i hope and we in the society work in this direction in inducing young people to join this sector seeing it as glamorous exciting cutting edge etc and secondly this is the first program that i've been uh, part of and i've been part of a few that actually takes national prosperity into account in its decision making and that providing it survives as a first. So we're out of time, but thanks to Dave Holmes, Cecil Buchanan, Matt Ray, and Mark Miller for joining me today to talk about the very important developments in Team Tempest and to describe the journey so far. It's been fascinating to discuss this with you. It's a fantastic collaboration and the uh, sheer expertise that comes 
out of collaborating with a number of different nations, 600 SMEs and larger pro, uh, companies, 200 contracts, uh, 60 technology programs. It just shows you how um, significant uh, both the expertise and the degree of collaboration is. And I'm looking forward to uh, learning more about this as we go forward to the future. So that's it from us. And thank you for joining us. And goodbye. Thank you.